So can you take us to your early days with EMS? Uh, how did you become a part of this community? Um, oh my goodness. I Yeah, this was back in the, probably towards the end of 2011, um, where I just not long started my PhD. I think it was in my first or second year. And I saw uh, an advert for the summer school. I didn't know much about EMS, but I knew that uh, from some of the, the literature that I was citing that plenty of the the people were involved in 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 the uh, uh, in the network, and I applied to go to the summer school and was accepted. And I went to the summer school in 2012, which was in beautiful Siena in Italy. And that was that was that was terrific. It was a, a really nice meeting of people, scholars, fantastic scholars. Some of the um, the faculty were awesome as well, um, all the big names, and it was in a beautiful setting. It wasn't in Siena at all, it was in Trento in Italy, I'm talking rubbish. The, it was the ISTR conferences in Siena, I'm talking rubbish. Um, so it was in Trento, uh, and it was hosted by Carlo Borzaga, um, and it was it was terrific, it was great. Uh, and then we travelled down, a few of us travelled then down to 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 Siena in Italy um, for the the ISTR summer school, which happened immediately afterwards. Um, so it was it was great, it was lovely. Um, I really enjoyed um, I jo enjoyed that summer school. But it was ten years ago. I can't believe it. <laughs> so you have seen this network evolve very closely over the years. You have also remained a board member with MS. So what changes, if any, do you notice uh, now at MS from your early days? Well, yeah, the 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 the, the the network is growing, yes. It's become more international, more... Um, I mean, it always had people, for, uh, you know, people outside Europe, but it it's really has refocused to, to be something which is much wider than just Europe. Um, and I've also found that, that it's started to incorporate um, a lot more, or widen the, 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 the concept that, that we've got this SE kind of banner, social enterprise, social entrepreneurship, and now social innovations kind of crept in as well. Um, but that's fine. These are the, the language evolves, concepts evolve all the time. And I think that um, it's become more inclusive. It's become more embracing of, of different perspectives, but always, oh, it's always maintained a, a critical perspective on what these, the, the, the underpinning assumptions, the underpinning ethos, the underpinning um, uh, you know, theoretical perspectives, etc. So I, I think there's there's a lot that's changed. Some of some of us some of us have, le have less hair. Some of us have got a lot older. Um, but uh, in actual fact, a lot a lot has changed, and a lot has stayed the same as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and connected to what you were just saying, uh, what role do you think EMS has played in the development of these fields uh, that it concerns itself with? I think the scholarship that's come out of BMS, particularly the the the, the early work, um, uh, has been very influential. Um, it's been influential in a number of different ways. Um, I think just going back to what I said earlier around the the critical perspectives on things and differentiating, you know, um, some of the 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 same language that we use to mean quite different things actually. So. Uh, some of the Anglo-American perspectives on social enterprise, social entrepreneurship, and some of the European um, perspectives uh, or th that, um, uh, that the, the scholarship that's, um, or, or the, the concept which is most influenced by a kind of um, so European social democratic tradition, if you like, particularly the, which, which is focused on uh, governance, effective governance and governance by the people um, to which the, the the social enterprise is aimed, um, I think that that's important, and I think that maintaining that, particularly in the face of um, the Anglo-American tradition, particularly that which is espoused by very big and powerful business schools, I think that's important. And we might be—I don't think we're a voice in the wilderness at all, but I do think that it's it's important that we maintain, at least, recognise that different traditions exist. And yes, they can coexist, and I think there's a space for both. But I also think that we, um, the, the the EMS tradition has always been, and will always be important to 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 maintain the fact that you know whether there is a cooperative tradition that's been going back you know hundreds of years, and that can't be forgotten, uh, and shouldn't be forgotten, even though we're in the face of 
um, uh, very powerful forces, I suppose, that don't want us to, to think about that sort of thing um, and just wants to box us into a specific definition of, of, of social enterprise. Amazing. Um, and coming back to EMS as a network, how significant have you found it towards supporting PhD candidates and early career researchers? I think it's been fantastic in terms of supporting early career researchers um, and, and PhD students. Uh, certainly it's been, it's been terrific for me um, um, in terms of building networks, supportive networks, uh, a network of peers. I mean, you, you, if, you, you want a, if you want a if you want to be an academic in this in this particular space, then you need to build a network of peers. And I certainly found that ne early network. You know, I have I have different networks, but I've always found the emails ne network and network of scholars and emails is it's been very important in terms of my academic development, in terms of my intellectual development, and in terms of my career development as well. So, I think it's 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 tremendously important uh, for though for those reasons. Um, yeah, I, I think the. I think I think it's I think it's been tremendously important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, what will be your message or wish for AMS on its twentieth anniversary? Well, hopefully we'll see twenty more years, and hopefully we'll see Carlo Barzaga, aged one hundred and forty-five. Obviously, uh, as a new pre installed as president. <laughs> no, that's 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 unkind to Carlo. I'm um, I I think that it is amazing that that we've. We've seen 20 years go by and it's gone by quickly, actually. I've seen 10 of those, if you like. Um, and I also think that um, we're really looking forward to, and perhaps it's an uncertain future, but it's certainly a future that, that, that's exciting as well. And I really hope that EMES is there to, to share and to shape the future going forward.